Hello there, and welcome to Five Food Fundamentals for Marathon Training Success. I'm Helen Phillips, and I am the Cheesecake Runner, and I am going to be taking you through my five food fundamentals that can get you to your marathon training well prepared, getting you to, to your race full of energy and ready to run. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. So fingers crossed tech works and everything is going to be okay this evening. Okay, share screen. Okay, well, now, what you should see is a little video of me in the top right hand corner, and that I'm now showing a, a PowerPoint. So, I'm going to take you through a few slides um, to, to, to explain what my five food fundamentals are. So, if anyone's got any problems um, seeing this or hearing me, um, just drop a note in the chat and I will pause and we'll see, what, see what's going on. Okie dokie. So welcome to my five food fundamentals for marathon training success. I'm Helen, I'm the cheesecake runner, and I am going to be taking you on a journey this evening to help you tune up your diet for your training. So it's so important if you've got a marathon coming up, maybe in the next couple of months or a marathon next spring, that you get your diet right and you get your diet right so you can train hard, train well and recover from all of your exertions as well as getting you ready and prepared to race on race day. And it's also important that you've, you've got the energy and you're able to recover and you're not eating so much that you're putting on tons of weight. Now, did you know that there was a study done um, over the last couple of years with um, a group of US charity runners and the, they surveyed them um, uh, over the course of their 16 week marathon training period. And what they found was that 11% of that, though, that charity runner group actually put on weight marathon training. And these guys were going through, you know, all of the hard work involved in their, their, their hard marathon training program. And you'd have thought, you know, they're burning so many calories, they're putting so much effort into their training. You'd have thought that they'd be all losing weight. But actually, that doesn't happen. And, you know, I've got anecdotal evidence as well from runners that, that I am, you know, friends with on Facebook and I've worked with. A lot of people really struggle with their nutrition all the way through their marathon training. And actually find, you know, a, a, a six weeks, a month out from race day, you know, they put on a few pounds and they're a little bit concerned because, you know, they're going to have to carry that extra weight uh, with them around their marathon course. And that's something we absolutely don't want to be doing. And there is, there are things that you can do. So, are you a busy parent? Are you juggling with kids and your job with running? And the last thing you need for me is to give you complicated diets and nutrition advice that you know means you're going to have to to cook different meals for you and your kids and you know and you know what happens when you're at work and you, you just can't eat healthy well we'll go through some of the things that you can do some of the strategies that you can implement and um, to make sure that you're eating well through the day even if you're super busy also do you struggle with the temptations of cake and Chardonnay and crisps? Oh my goodness, I know I do. So we'll talk a little bit about, you know, some of the pitfalls of um, caving into temptation, especially when you're training. I know we all love a treat and running and working so hard, we all feel we deserve it. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well today. And have you ever got back from your run? And felt you could eat everything in the house and you you are what's called rungry and you eat and you eat and you eat and you just nothing will satiate you nothing will curb your appetite now if you're a first time marathoner and you haven't really got into that that big extended 16 week training program yet maybe you're running london in the spring and you've only just taken up running and you're a sponge for information um, 
this is something that you know will shock and surprise you that you you get back from training and you are super duper hungry it exists it's called runga uh, and but there is something there are things that you can do to avoid runga and also control it when it does hit okay so you're in the right place if you want to eat healthier every single day regardless of whether you're your marathon training where where you're just ramping up your running just to get going we're going to look at some of the things that you can do to eat healthier every day you're also in the right place if you want to know some simple changes to your diet that are guaranteed to improve your running results so i like to keep things simple you know i, I i'm a big cook i love cooking love to be in the kitchen but i know a lot of you aren't and and you know endless recipes with long 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 loads of ingredients it's not everybody's cup of tea so i believe in keeping things simple and to make some just some small changes to to your diet to the food that you eat is the way forward not going on massive massive odd diets that that are, it require you to just eat complicated combinations of foods or just cut everything out of your diet now, what we're gonna go through is following my five food fundamentals for marathon training success. If you go follow those five fundamentals that we're going to be going through, I guarantee that you'll have more energy for your exercise. You're gonna be able to recover rapidly. And oh my goodness, when you're in marathon training, the recovery is just as important as the training because Marathon training is relentless. You're going to be running day after day after day. And it, you know, you can, your body gets fatigued. And so you need to be doing everything you possibly can to make sure that you can recover rapidly and that you can get to the stage where you can go out for the next day's training runs. And your diet, your diet plays a big part in recovery. We we'll also need to make sure that you get trained and you're ready to run your marathon. So if, if you're constantly not feeling like training, you've got no energy, you really, oh, my bit here comes, but you really don't know, don't want to go out, you're feeling a bit demoralized, you know, that's going to compromise your training. And that's going to mean that, you know, when you cut, get to race day, you're going to feel, mm, I didn't quite do all my training plan. I know, not too sure what it's going to feel like. So making sure that you, you get your diet right, you follow these five principles, you're going to have the energy you need to train well so you can get to the start line confident that you are ready 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 to run your race okay so a little bit about me so why am i qualified to talk to you about food and and marathon running and you, you know it, it why who am i who is the cheesecake runner now some of you i know um we, we've known each other for a, a good few years and you know a little bit about my journey um that i've been on um over the last few years but you know some people i know there are a lot of names who have signed up to, to this this little workshop who we've never met before so i'd really like to welcome you to, to Cheesecake Runner and my, my nutrition advice, my running advice, and my general sort of woohoo on life advice. So a little bit about me. So, okay, so I am currently, I am now a nutrition coach and I work with runners and I help people stay on the state and narrow with their running, make sure we're getting, getting them to the race and beyond their races in great shape. So they can realize their life goals and their dreams of marathon running or being fit and healthy. But I wasn't always uh, a nutrition coach and I've only been doing this for, for, for the last few years. I've been on quite a journey and way back in 2012, you know, it's, it's not that long ago, but you know, it's a good, here's a few years now. Um, I was not in a good place. I, I was, I had a very, very busy job. I was traveling all over the world. I was, I was a business consultant, completely different from what I'm doing now. And that lifestyle took its toll on me. And I, and I put on over the years a bit of weight. Um, despite my best efforts, I found it really difficult to keep fit and healthy. You know, I was trying to get to a gym. I was trying to eat healthy. And 2012 really was, I had a bit of a wake up call. 
Um, nothing dramatic, um, nothing medical, nothing happened to me there. But I, um, I, it was a little bit of a light bulb moment for me. It was actually in Dublin airport, if anyone really wants to know. And I saw the book called uh, Run, Fat Bitch, Run on the airport bookshelves. And it's kind of, it spoke to me. It was like, I felt I was the fat bitch and I needed to get out running. So I picked up the book and by the time I got back to Heathrow that evening, the flight was delayed, I'd read it and I had committed to my new lifestyle. Um, so that was back in 2012. We then had the 2012 Olympics and I was inspired. Um, that was absolutely amazing. I went super Saturday, I saw Bolt. I saw so many things at the Olympics. You, I, was just, I just went crazy. Um, so 2012 really was a big turning point for me and I had to start from scratch. I wasn't in a good place. I wasn't fit. I couldn't run. I couldn't run for more than a minute. Um, I, I sort of blobbed along a bit. Um, I was out of shape and my diet was appalling. I was surviving on bottles of wine and little slabs of cheese. You know, I would get home of a week and I'd open a bottle of wine or two. And, you know, you'd get a big slab of cheese and I could quite easily nibble that after my dinner with my wine in front of the television, just chilling out. You know, that, that's how I lived. And I did that sort of thing quite regularly. So 2012 saw me get to grips with, with, my, with my diet. Um, that was the first thing I, I really changed up. And I, I made sure that I was eating good, nutritious, healthy foods. I took control of my lifestyle and my job. Um, and I didn't change at that point. I didn't become a nutrition coach then. Um, but I, I put some some guidelines um, down in the sand with, with my bosses about what I was prepared to do and what I wasn't. And I then started running and I, I kept running and I kept running and I kept running. Okay, so back in 2012, that's where I, I started out. So if you are on your marathon journey, and I know a lot of you are, and if you are thinking, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm so unfit, I'm a little bit overweight, and I, you know, it's impossible. It's impossible to run a marathon. It's impossible to get fit and lean and do all of these things. It isn't. You just need to work hard and take one step at a time. So I started, um, I started running. Within six months, I'd run my first half marathon, which was at Reading in 2013. And if anyone ran that, it was horrendous. It was cold and raining like this. It was horrendous. Um, I almost gave up, but I didn't. I stuck at it. And I then got, got the bug. I got the bug for half marathons to start with. And then I started running marathons. My first London was in 2015. And since then, I have I've really got the bug for running a marathon. And this autumn will see me run my 10th marathon. So I'm currently training for marathons 9 and 10. So in that it's quite a short space of time, I've gone from being, you know, a bit unfit, not very healthy, uh, to getting myself into half marathon shape. And I, and I did that within six months from, from, you know, not being able to run at all. And, and then I've, I've started running marathons. So I remember what it's like to feeling, you know, this isn't for me. I'm not a runner. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just a, a normal person. I remember what it's like to feel you know, out of control with my food. I, I know what it's like to feel as if I can't run. I've never run. I'm not a runner. Um, so I'm hoping I can relate to you on a personal basis about some of the trials and tribulations that you've got about your marathon training journey and your fitness journey and your food for fitness journey. So that's why I think I'm in a good place, you know, not like some of the dietitians or some of the running coaches who are just super skinny and very, very fit. And, you know, they're, they're more interested in the, you know, the sub three hour marathoner. I'm interested in helping the new marathon runner, people who are a bit unsure and you want to go on a journey rather like I've been on over the last few years. Okay, that's enough about me. Let's move on. Okay, so what are we going to cover this evening? So first up, we'll cover a little bit about why people struggle training for their marathon. And not necessarily, we're not going to talk about training plans and all, you know, what fart legs are and, and long runs and all of that good stuff. I'm going to be doing 
uh, workshops on that coming up in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for those sorts of workshops. We're going to talk about some of the things people struggle with with their diet, um, firstly, um, today. And then I'm going to take you through my approach to food, uh, food for marathon training, and how I changed my diet um, for my training and some of the good results that, that, that I've got. And so what we need to be doing by the end of this evening, I am going to be, you will get my five food fundamentals um, that you will then know um, how you can get trained and ready to run your marathon the best way you can. Okay, sound good? Right, let's move on. Okay, I have sent out today, and I hope, fingers crossed, tech worked, um, a little bit of a workbook. Um, and, you, you know, you could be sitting here, you, you've probably got Facebook on. I didn't tell anyone to turn off Facebook. <laughs> so you've probably got your phone and you've got a laptop here. You might have some kids screaming in the background and the dog and maybe the television's on. So I know I'm competing for your attention right now, which is why I, I sent you a little bit of workbook because you can listen to me half-heartedly going on about diet stuff um, in the background and you can be multitasking. You might be doing some ironing. I hate ironing. Um, but I've given you a workbook. So what I'd like you to be doing is really listening and engaging with the information I'm giving you because it's just information at the end of the day. If you're not going to listen to it and think about it and think about how it pertains to your life and your training, you know, you might as well not be on, on, in, in this workshop, not be on this webinar. So I've got you a little workbook. And what I would like you to do is I'm going to go through um, my five food fundamentals um, and the five things that I switched up in my diet that I know has made a massive difference to my training. And I would like you to think about your diet, the food that you eat today. And I would like you to think about what might need to be changed um, to make sure that your diet, the food that you're eating is completely optimized for your training. Now, the, the, more, the, the, the better diet you've got, the, the better nutritious food that you're eating, the more you're going to get out of your training. You know, trust me, if, if your diet is rubbish, then you're, you, it's going to compromise your training. So, you know, and marathon training is not just like, you know, running a 10K or running a half. It really takes it out of you. So getting your diet right is, is a key part of your training. And I would urge you to take it seriously. And this is your first step. The first part of that training is to do a little bit of self-assessment. Where are you today? And what improvements do you need to be making to, to the food that you're eating and maybe your lifestyle to make sure that you're in the best place possible um, come your marathon training, coming race day, okay? So that's the workbook. Uh, let's get going. So first up, why do people struggle um, with training? Uh, you know, what are some of the things around their diet that people struggle with with their training? Now, it can just be boiled down to they overestimate the effort that they put into their training. So, so what I see a, a lot of people, especially new marathoners, they think, oh, whoopee, I'm running a marathon. Yay! I'm going to be doing so much exercise, so much training that I, you know, this is a great excuse to pick out. Now, if a lot of people start running, um, for weight loss or they, they run regularly so that they kind of like have burnt the calories so they can drink the wine um, or, or eat the cake. So, you know, it's always in, in two ways in our minds that, you know, if, if I run this half marathon, I can eat the cake. Um, and, you know, a lot of us, lots of us think that way. You know, I, I've been guilty. I, I, I think a lot of that way. Did you know that a bottle of wine is about 600 calories? And, you know, I often think about that, you know, I burnt, you know, uh, a bottle of wine today if I run run for for an hour. So there's a lot of, you know a lot of people think that way. So if you you are the sort of person who 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 was thinking like that on a normal basis and you get into marathon training and you go woohoo, 
this is a great excuse to pig out because I am going to be burning so many calories when I'm training for my marathon. But I've got a bit of news for you that actually you're not probably not burning as many calories as you actually think you are when you're when you're training for a marathon yes your training load yes the amount of exercise you're doing is increasing but it's probably not increasing that much and guess what as your body becomes sort of acclimatized to the, the new training regime you're putting it under you know after you might feel really hungry to start off if you're having a step change in the amount of training you're doing. But then after a couple of weeks, that becomes normal and your body compensates for it. And if you're then, you know, supersizing because you're marathon training and you're not needing all of those calories, then you are gonna start putting on weight. So that's the first overestimate. The other thing a lot of people do, another thing I've been guilty of, is you reward yourself for running. Um, marathon training is tough. You know, you're going to be going out doing speed sessions, hill work, and long, long, long runs. And you, you know, you'll find it tough. And a lot of us like to reward ourselves for, for tough things, uh, for tough runs. And, you know, if you're rewarding yourself, you know, with a pint of beer or chocolate chip muffin, again, you're rewarding yourself with, with empty calories. There's not much nutrition in a chocolate chip muffin or a pint of beer that's going to, then the nutrition that's going to benefit your body, that's going to help your body to recover. You know, and guess what? All of those calories, they're just going to add to the calorific load that you're eating and can actually contribute to you, to you putting on weight. Okay, and the final thing about overestimating effort, uh, similarly, is... You know, a lot of people, when you get back from your runs, um, will grab the nearest thing, a Mars bar or, you know, cookies, your biscuits. You know, could you, you know, you, you pop open a thing of Pringles and it's gone. Um, if that's the sort of thing you grab when you get back from your long runs, guess what happens about an hour, maybe two hours later? In, in those sorts of foods, um, because of the, the insulin response that they give to your body, you're going to be rungry very, very quickly. And they are not the, the right sort of foods that you need to be eating to help you recover from your runs. So guess what? If you reach for the wrong type of food after your runs, uh, junk food that's highly processed, then you are going to feel that massive runger after you've been out running. Okay, so let's have a think. How many of those things that I've just gone through um, are applicable to you? So do you reward yourself with, for running? Are you one of the sort of people who are likely to supersize your meals because I'm marathon training? Or are you the sort of person who is going to get back from a run and just pigs out on chocolate and cake and, you know, Pringles and crisps and beer and champagne? Hey, champagne. What? How can I say champagne? It must be, you know, subconscious. So think about that. If you are the sort of person who would overestimate your effort, think about what you can do to tune up your diet. And we're going to go through now the five food fundamentals that, you know, you can do things in a better way. Okay, so it doesn't have to be this way. So I have a straightforward, easy to follow approach that's got me lean, fit and fast, and I still eat cake. Yep, I am not called the cheesecake runner for nothing, nothing reason. Uh, I love cheesecake, I love cheese, and I love cake. And I love running as well. So, uh, you know, you can see that I'm that sort of, you know, run for award type person anyhow. Because I don't believe that running should be just about running. But there are some things that you can do to make sure that you have the best running experience and marathon training experience possible without giving up everything. First of all, okay, so these are my five food for fitness foundations. So number one, now this is my biggie and it's the one that I <clears throat> am reasonably obsessed about most of the time, whether I am training, whether I'm not training. 
it's all about eating more fruit and veg. Now, we all know that we should be eating about five portions of fruit and veg a day. You know, the message, the government is trying to get that message loud and clear across to everybody that we know it's five and we need to be eating them every day. But how many of you are actually eating your five portions of fruit and veg a day? You know, hands up. Um, is it something you're guilty of? You know, I do struggle with, with, with just finding fruit and veg out there. Now, I've got some news for you that fruit and veg is an essential part of your diet. Even if you're not a runner, even if you're not marathon training, you need to be eating good proportions, good amounts of different fruit and vegetables in your diet. And the reason being is they've got plenty of vitamins, minerals, and they've got good amounts of fiber, which is so good for your gut. So as a marathon runner, you are going to be putting your body through immense amounts of stress and strain. You are going to make it work. It is going to be hard. You are going to, you know, come back exhausted and your body will be not thanking you for the long runs that you're doing. So you need to be making sure that you are getting as much nutrition in your diet as you possibly can. And that means eating at least five portions of fruit and veg a day, if not more. So how, how do you do that? Well, I try and eat um, a portion of veg or some fruit at every single meal that I have through, a through the day. So presuming you're eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, even if your breakfast is mid-morning, it's still counted as breakfast, um, you need to make sure that you, you are eating if you're eating at those those points in the day great so how else do i do i load up um i also eat um fruit and veg as snacks so i i have bananas i'm reasonably obsessed with bananas when i'm marathon training bananas are excellent because they're they're packed full of carbohydrates and they've got a good amount of potassium so i eat fruit as a, i snack on fruit um rather than you, you know chocolate crisps and cake okay so that, that's my go-to snack. Right now, this summer, I've really got into watermelon. Um, don't ask me why, um, but watermelon seems to be my thing. Um, so, I, you know, watermelon, um, I'm eating bananas, I love grapes. You know, we're in summer. We're, well, we're just coming out of summer, and there's been so much great, you know, summer fruits. You've got no excuse for not eating fruit. And don't worry about sugar. Um, because you're getting so many more vitamins and minerals and good fiber. The, the additional sugar that you're going to be eating from fruit, you know, is compensated for all that great nutrition you're putting into your body. Okay, and then dinner, lunch and dinner, I always try and make sure that I'm having, you know, maybe two or three different types of vegetable with my dinner. So I, I'm a bit of a meat and two veg type girl. Or, or a you know a stew and curry type person, and I always make sure, regardless of what I'm eating, I, I cook veg. You know, I might have some sort of you know a, a curry, but I'll make a, a some vegetables alongside, or I'll add vegetables into my foods. So you know, you're making um, like a bolognese. You know, hide some mushrooms and some celery and some tomatoes in it you know, and maybe some peas, you know, it doesn't have to be authentic, but it's, it's the way of getting more veg into your diet. You also need to make sure that the veg that you are eating or the fruit and veg you're eating is not just the same old, same old. Put some variety in your life because each, each of those wonderful fruits and veg, um, they will have different, a range of different nutrients and you need to get the range of nutrients in your diet. Um, okay, so you can see that I'm completely obsessed, very passionate about fruit and veg. What have I had today? I, this week, I've made myself this massive homemade coleslaw. Um, I've got red cabbage, I've got onions, I've got tomatoes, I've got beetroot in it. And I'm using, eating that as a side dish. And I might have some tomatoes and some uh, sort of lettuce salad with it and some meat and potatoes. So, you know, I, I kind of loaded up my plate with lots and lots of different, different vegetables just on one, one meal, just one plate. So there's loads of things that you can do. Um, I know kids are not very um, veg friendly. 
so you can hide them you know and if they'll only eat peas give them peas but try different things out very often it's in the mind people saying oh i don't like that have you tried it no um so to give it a give it a go um and make sure that you're you're tuning up your diet with eating a lot more fruit and veg okay number two don't dismiss starchy carbs. Okie dokie. This is an, this is my, actually, this is the one I'm second passionate about. So you need to be eating carbohydrates in your diet as a runner. And the reason being is that you need carbs as fuel to help you fuel your long runs and all of your running. Okay. So I know there are a lot of people who are on sugar detoxes and they all seem to be a little bit carb phobic these days, but now you are a marathon runner in training. You need to forget that internet hype. Um, if you ask any nutritionist about carbohydrates, and I am, I'm a nutrition coach, if you ask me about carbohydrates, um, I will tell you, you should be eating those carbohydrates. You know, the skinny little chick who, who wears a boob tube on Instagram and says, oh my goodness, they're going to be, they're going to cause you cancer. It's bollocks. You need to be eating carbohydrates, starchy carbohydrates for your marathon training. So um, what sort of carbohydrates would, would I recommend you eating? Whole grains. Whole grains are just amazing. And that is what you need to be including more of in your diet right now. Now, whole grains are not the sort of refined um, carbohydrates, you know, like, like white bread and white pasta. What's different about the whole grain is you get the whole grain. <laughs> and it's the grain, it's the, it's the outer husk of, of the, the grain of the carbohydrate source that's where all the nutrients are. And if you, if you don't eat starchy carbohydrates and whole grains in your diet, you're missing out on all of that essential nutrition. So, you know, you're, you're missing, you know, you, you're going, oh, I'm going carb free because it's not very good for me. Um, but you're missing out on essential nutrients that you need in your diet. And as a marathon runner, you need carbohydrates because even if you're going on a long, slow run where we're trying to burn fat as fuel, you still need carbohydrate to help your body burn that fat. It doesn't burn on its own. You need to have the carbohydrate, okay? So make sure that your meals, that you are eating starchy carbohydrates in your meals. Okay, good to go. That was number two. Number three, you need to be eating good quality lean protein. Now, this is really important for us runners because we need to be making sure we're eating protein for, for muscle repair, for body repair. Because when we go out running, we put our muscles under stress and strain and we make sort of little micro tears in the muscles. Um, and and that, 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 that's where your soreness comes in. It's one of the reasons why your muscles are sore, sore is because you make these little, little micro tears in the fibers. So you need to be eating your protein um, so that you can repair those muscle tears. So you can actually help your muscles to get back to that sort of normalized state so you can recover quickly. So you need to be making sure that you're eating lean protein with not too much saturated fat. And if you're a vegetarian, making sure that you're eating good quality vegetable, vegetarian protein sources. So I'm not a massive meat eater. I, I you know, I'd quite, you know, I'd love to be vegetarian, but, but I do still eat meat. Um, so when I'm marathon training, I make sure that I'm increasing the amount of protein that I've got in my diet. Um, because I think my diet generally would be quite low in protein because I, I wouldn't normally, you know, it's not really the sorts of foods that I, I you know, I'm not really a meat eater, not too much. So, so I make sure that I'm eating a regular amount of protein in my diet. Um, just because I'm marathon training, because it's, it's really important for muscle repair. Now, the other thing about protein is a lot of people come to me and say, oh, um, what protein powder do you recommend, Helen? For, you know, I want it to power my running. 
The other thing you need to know about protein is protein plays no role in giving you energy to run. So taking protein powder or drinking a protein shake before you're going to go running, that's not going to give you any energy. To, you're not going to burn any of that protein powder to fuel your runs. It just doesn't happen. Biochemistry doesn't happen that way. Um, protein is used to, to power your runs, but it, it's your muscles get degraded um, to do that. And, and your body only does that when it's really in um, a sorry state and it's lacking in carbs and it's something you really don't want to do, be doing. So the other thing to know is protein does not give you energy for running. Um, protein is just required for, for your muscles for, um, for recovery. And the best way of getting protein in your diet is through proper food sources rather than protein powders and shakes, okay? It's just absorbed better. It's absorbed easier into your body and you get all of the good, the better nutrition from, from real food rather than, you know, processed foods that come from protein powders. So number three was eat more protein. Number four, iron rich diet. Now I was, I was having a sort of a bit of a chat um, with someone earlier on today about um, her iron rich diet. So this is really, really important for us runners because a lot of us runners can be low in iron and that can lead to feeling anemic and being lacking in energy. And it's something that runners really, really struggle with. Um, and if you're lacking in energy, it might be that you're, you're just low in iron. So why are runners low in iron? Let me explain. So when you run, you pound your feet on pavements like this. And what happens is every time you pound your foot on the pavement, you, you can rupture and break some of the, the blood vessels that are, that are in your feet, okay? And so when you're rupturing your blood vessels, the iron is just released and because iron is, blood is made up with, with iron and then that is excreted from your body. So when we're running, if, and especially if you're running long, long distances for a long time, as we are in marathon training, you're going to deplete your body of iron. So we need to make sure um, that as runners, that we are eating an iron rich diet. It is super, super, super important. And also, we need um, good quantities of iron um, because it's made, iron is a key component of blood and we need good blood so we can get all the nutrients and the oxygen transported around our bodies um, to our legs to help us to run. So my fourth food foundation is to eat an iron rich diet. So my recommendations for you are to eat more red meat, um, eggs, um, you can eat green, if you're not a, um, a meat eater, green leafy vegetables are another great source of iron. And cooking them in an iron or cast iron cooking pan um, is a really great way of getting, getting iron in your diet. And the thing that I do, my little snackette of choice when I'm marathon training is I, I love black pudding. <laughs> Oh my goodness, and I'm a little bit of an awful thing going on right now. Um, chicken liver pate, yes, seems to be my lunch of choice right now. Um, so, so offal is packed with iron. So if you are an offal eater, it's really cheap. And now when marathon train, great excuse to sort of eat some blood. Okay, that's disgusting. Let's move on. Five, number five, drink water. At this point, I'm just gonna have a, have a sip. So I suppose it goes without saying that you're gonna be, you're training, you're gonna be running lots, that you need to be drinking water. And as marathon runners, as, as runners in training, we need to make sure that we maintain good, good hydration status. Um, now, when I talk to, to my clients, um, uh, you know, they, they sometimes hide a lot of stuff about their diet. You know, they don't want me to, ne to know that I've, they've been sort of snacking on chocolate and all the rest of it, but they're usually very good at owning up to the fact that they're just not drinking enough water. And I think it's, it's quite common. A lot of people are not drinking enough water through the course of the day. 
And this is a real issue if you're a runner and if you're out training, because we need to be well hydrated because we need to be able to sweat when we're running because sweating is the way our body cools down. So my fifth five food foundations is to drink more water and to make sure that you're well hydrated throughout the course of the day. And the way to do that is to, you know, I've got a pint glass here. It's not got much water in it because I've been talking quite a lot um, and preparing for this. So, you know, keep, keep a pint glass with you on your, on your desk. Um, you can buy sort of big bottles uh, or, you know, we're all runners. We've all got running water bottles. So take that around with you. So you've always got something to sip from and there really is no excuse um, to not drinking water. Okay, so it's really, really important. Another thing I am super, super passionate about, drink more water. Okay, so let's be honest. You know, how's your training been going over the past few months? And is there some other thing in, that you think you, your diet could be sort of doing to, to get in the way? Anything that you, you think you need to be tuning up right now? So thinking about what I've just said about my five food fundamentals, as well as, as the things that uh, runners struggle with that we, we went through first, you know, what are the changes that you need to be making? What are the things that are not great in your diet right now in the foods that you're eating? You know, is it that you're fruit and veg? You, know, you hardly eat anything. You, you struggle to drink water and you know, takeaways oh my goodness you love a ready meal and takeaway and they're not great they're full of fat full of salt full of sugar not great nutrition so what are the things that you know about your diet that are not particularly great and those are the things that you need to be tuning up for your training and basically nothing changes if nothing changes so if you're happy with where you are at the moment, you're happy with your running progress and you think that's going to be good enough to get you to marathon training, get you through your marathon training, good. But really, if you, if you, if you want to pick it, if you've got your running to the next level, then you need to be changing, switching up your diet, making sure it's optimized for your train, training because nothing changes if nothing changes. So let's think about what your training could be like. So if you've ever got back from your runs and you're just, or you just don't want to go out because you've got no energy, let's see how your diet could, could change that. What if you could have all of the energy in the world? So adopting these principles, the five principles that I went through, I have now run eight marathons and each of those has been faster than the previous race. And I have, I've just secured myself a good for age spot at London Marathon next year, which I'm quite proud of because I, I was never a runner. Um, so, you know, it's a bit of a dream to have got recognized like that. And I've lost weight and I've lost body fat and I've become leaner through each of those training cycles. So, you know, the right at the beginning, I said that a lot of marathon runners, people training for a marathon put on weight. Well, Using these five principles, I've managed to, you know, train well, get quicker, get leaner, and lose that, that weight, the excess weight that I was carrying. And I'm now 51, and I'm leaner, I'm fitter, and I'm faster than ever. So you're not, you're never too old to make these changes. So think about what changes you need to be making to realize your dream of running your marathon. So I've shown that by just making a, a few small changes, because you know, basically we went through five things and they're quite small. There was nothing groundbreaking in anything that we went through. That you know, I've been rewarded with math and success. You know, not just once, I've, I've done it eight times. So you've got three options right now. You can decide to do nothing. So you've listened to what I've had to say today and take, take you through some, some changes you can make to your, your diet. Hey, fine, you're just going to carry on your own sweet way because you know, maybe, maybe you don't need to change or maybe you're just a little bit 
stuck in your ways, think you can do things your own way. Absolutely fine, and I wish you well. Or you can try to figure it out on your own. Now, this is really important because you know that you need to change and you know you need to be doing things. And this is, this is where I was when back in 2012, um, I you know, was a little bit rabbit in headlights thinking, I've got to do something. And I, and I had to figure it all out on my own. I read a lot of books, um, searched the internet. I tried to put all the pieces together about what I should be eating. Um, to get myself healthy to start with, um, because you know my diet was rubbish. Um, and then when I started training, I started marathon training. Um, first marathon I ran, you know, I did all the mistakes. You know, I loaded up my plate, thinking, "Oh my God, I'm going to be burning so many calories." I rewarded myself for running, and guess what? I put on some weight, which wasn't great because I didn't want that because I'd already I'd lost some, and then I'm putting more on. So I, I then had to research and I, I read all the articles. I, I, I got books like up to here to try and work out exactly what I should be eating to give myself good amounts of energy and to make sure that I was recovered well and that I, I was eating a good nutritious diet. So, you know, you can spend quite a lot of time trying to figure it out or, you know, talking to your virtual Facebook friends, you know, I'm lacking in energy. What do you recommend? Should I, should I eat liver? No one's going to recommend liver. You know, we're trying to get that information. It takes forever. Trust me, I have done it. Or I've packaged up all of my know-how. So I've given you five of my, my foodie tips, foodie tips for training, but I've got quite a few more and quite a few more tips for how you can get there, get marathon training ready, get you through to race day, help you with your long runs. And I packaged up all of that know-how to help you with your running and with your training. And I pulled together a little program called Eat Right for Running. You know, it does what it says on the tin. It's all about eating right for your running. Now, Eat Right for Your Running um, it's a little program that gives you straightforward, easy to digest nutrition advice, and it's designed for runners just like you. It's the sort of information that I was looking for when I first started out. When I first started out running and I started training for my first marathon, I, I, I wanted to know what I had to do, why I had to do it, and how I had to do it. And, you know, if someone could help me with that, Fabulous. Eat Right for Running also ensures you've got the, the right diet, you've got the right food that you're eating, and you've got enough energy that you're going to be able to train hard. Because it, it, it's not a diet, there's no food restrictions. It's all about making sure that you're eating the right foods for your running and for your marathon training. Now, I've also included in Eat Right for Running all the support that you need to succeed with your running goals. So making sure that you are making those changes. So it's ch challenging yourself to change. So identifying what needs to be tuned up and then making those changes to make sure that you're going to succeed at your running goals. So without making changes, you know, if you really haven't got the right diet and and you don't know where to go, you really do risk, you know, running out of energy when you start training. And if you start running out of energy when you're on long training runs, I've seen it all before, you can lose morale, motivation, especially when training gets tough. And, oh my God, this is the worst, is you risk putting on weight through your training. And we absolutely don't want that because we don't want to be carrying more pounds of weight around our marathon courses. So let's talk about Louisa. Now, I worked with Louisa a couple of years ago now, and she came to me, she was, she was in the midst of training for London. Uh, I think it was about six weeks, maybe eight weeks out from the marathon, and she came to me, she was about to pull out. Um, she'd been trying to lose some weight, and she was gonna pull out of her marathon, you know, and running London was her dream. And we went through, we went through, coached, I coached her through looking her diet and giving her my five food fundamentals and making sure that she was eating a balanced, healthy diet. And, you know, this is what she said to me. 
After two weeks, she'd lost three pounds and, we, and wasn't suffering marathon training runger any longer. You know, in fact, we got her back on track so that she, she could go out, she could keep, keep on with her training. She felt she had more energy for training. And because she was actually out there being able to carry on doing those training runs, you know, all of a sudden her motivation and her morale just bounced back because she, she had the energy once again. Now, Louisa, she had been a serial dieter. She'd been a yo-yo dieter all her life. So she had this very, very odd relationship with food. But getting her back on track with healthy eating, you know, helped satisfy her, her runger and helped get her back with her marathon training. And then last year, I worked with a guy called James. And James was running his first marathon. And he was worried about hitting the wall because um, he wasn't sure whether or not he, he was getting his fueling right, whether he was, he was eating all the right foods for his runs. So we worked through making sure that he was eating the right foods and he followed my five food foundations as well. And he had a fabulous race at New York last year. So what is Eat Right for Running? Well, it's a four week program to get your diet right for your running. So if you're running um, a spring marathon, now is the time that you need to be thinking about your diet. And so this would be absolutely perfect timing to go through Eat Right for your running because it'll start, it'll get you on track right now to make sure that you've got the right energy for your training and you can start it right now. So what do you get? You get modules of information that go through the right foods for running and recovery. We'll talk about Give you, I'll give you my tips and advice for how to eat when life gets in the way. So how to eat when you're super, super busy or, you know, how to eat alongside your training, to how to fit everything together. And also the other thing with Eat Right for Running is we get you to challenge yourself to change. So it's all about you. It's all about your nutrition, the foods that you're eating, and making sure you're switching up and you're changing your diet to make sure it's right for you for your running. And also because you've been part of um, this, 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 this um, workshop today, I'm throwing in my bonus healthy snacking guide. Now we all love to snack and especially when we're marathon training, you know, we, we want a bit of, bit of a treat now and again, and it's okay if you're eating some good nutritious food. So I pulled together a five days to feed yourself fit healthy snacking guides with some of my, my favorite snacks. So Eat Right for Running, it's not a free program, it is a paid program, but it costs you just 49 pounds. And that is for four weeks of, of information, advice, and coaching that will get your, get your, your, your food right, um, your food for fitness right to support your running and support your training this autumn. So this program is gonna get you nourished, well-fueled, and fueled correctly for your running. It's gonna help you break free from years of yo-yo dieting because it's not a diet. It, uh, it's a series of healthy eating principles that will help you with your running to make sure you're eating the right foods for your training. And it will also help you Go, go from being a, a nervous newbie to being a confident master marathoner. So you can have confidence in your training plan because you're not going to run out of energy. You're not going to think, oh my goodness, I just can't do that because your food and your diet is getting in your way. And you can start right now. So you've got three options. Again, you can decide to do nothing not make any changes to the foods you're eating because, you know, let's face it, it's going okay. Fabulous. Or you can try and figure it out on your own. You know, I know how, how long that took uh, for myself and I, it, it took hours and hours and hours and I still wasn't sure whether or not I got it right. And I was constantly, you know, checking the internet or asking other people, you know, what do you do? What do you do? Or reading things. And it, it, it distracts from your running. And, you know, when you get into marathon training, you can't afford to waste time. 
or you can just um, get Eat Right for Running for just £49. And I love I've done all the heavy lifting for you. There's, I've just included the critical pieces of information you need to get your diet right for your running and for your marathon training. So over to you. What questions do you have? So right now, if you've got any questions about um, the food that you're eating for your fitness or how to eat right for your running or for the program, if you just drop me an email or drop me a comment in the Cheesecake Runner Facebook page, then I can get back to you as soon as possible. So thank you very much, everybody, and have a great evening, and I'll see you soon.